Today we're diving into the DC Direct superpowers Aquaman and Black Manta to see if these new McFarlane Toys figures sink or swim. Welcome to 5 Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate 5 points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The 5 points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting with the packaging, and I have to say that there's something cozy about these blister cards. The nice familiar Superpowers logo, the character specific logo, the red and yellow Star Spangle banner, the comic style character art on the sides, and of course that retro style McFarlane logo in the corner. On the back we can see how big this collection has grown. Looking at the vehicles, I've already covered the Batmobile. If you also want me to cover the Invisible Jet, sound off in the comments. Either way, for packaging I'm giving Aquaman and Black Manta one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and Aquaman is actually one of the taller superpowers figures coming in at four and seven eighth inches. Black Manta, despite his giant helmet, is actually shorter coming in at four and three quarters. Although just barely, that does make Aquaman the tallest member of the new McFarlane Superpower Justice League. And again, he's taller than the guy wearing the giant helmet. I'm not going to pretend to know what goes into action figure scaling, so I do want to be gracious, but I do feel like this is an observation I only ever seem to have with McFarlane toys and not so much other companies. Don't get me wrong, I always felt that the original Aquaman was a bit short compared to his other super friends, but putting these two side by side, and it looks like Aquaman and Aqualad. Since this is Rebirth, he's rocking the long hair. Kinda reminds me of Chad Kroger. I can't help but wonder if at some point we're gonna get a short-haired variant with the trunks painted on. Similar to the more classic colored Wonder Woman variant. True to form for Aquaman, he has his scale male shirt. The plastic is different between the arms and torso and actually don't match. It's a small thing, but once you see it, you can't really unsee it. It's interesting because the torso and arms don't exactly match on the original either. Color-wise, I'll say this is a particularly bright green, very similar to the green used in Robin. Something a bit closer to Jon Stewart would have been preferred, but it's not bad. But one thing I'm not crazy about is how wide he is. Stylistically, that makes him a lot closer to the Wave 1 Batman and Superman, which does make sense. But after The Flash, and especially Detective Batman, I was really hoping we were edging more closely to the original series. Another thing I'd like to see McFarlane work on is more consistency with the faces. Earlier faces in the line were very angular and cartoony and very brightly colored, but by the time we got to Wonder Woman, the skin tone was a lot more natural and the facial features were a bit more realistic. Aquaman seems to be somewhere in the middle. It's not bad, I just kind of wish they'd pick a lane and stick with it. Of the two, I'm actually a lot more impressed with Black Manta. McFarlane's done a wonderful job sculpting this helmet. I love the bright yellow eyes, and these hoses are a softer plastic so as not to get in the way of our articulation. My only complaint is the same complaint I have with a lot of Black Manta figures, other McFarlane figures included, which is simply that the helmet is too small to fit a whole human head. Otherwise, the torso is new and nicely sculpted. This one actually feels more in line with the originals, and you'd probably be surprised to know that a lot of this is actually reuse. Obviously, the head and torso is new. That includes his big old neck and belt, but the arms and legs are reuse from the Flash. Cast in that deep Crayola blue, though, and you'd hardly ever notice. The fact that they they didn't include Black Manta in the original collection is mind-blowing, but I am so happy we finally have one. For presentation, I'm giving Black Manta one whole point. As for the half-human, half-Atlantean Aquaman, I'm giving him half. Moving on to posability, and it's time for my usual disclaimer. These figures have very limited articulation, but that's to match the original Kenner collection, so I'm not penalizing them here. From the top, and both figures have a swivel neck. As I said before, Black Manta is very nicely unhindered by the hoses. Aquaman has a swivel shoulder, Black Manta has a swivel shoulder, neither figure has anything in the waist, but they can both kick out, and they can both bend at the knees. I'd find it unacceptable in any other toy line, but here it's on purpose. So for posability, I'm giving these two one whole point. Moving on to playability, and apropos of the rest of the series, Black Manta doesn't come with any accessories. Aquaman, however, does have his trident. He can hold that in his right hand like so. It's nice and thin and not too brittle. It also raises an important question. If if they can make nice, firm, slender tridents for superpowers Aquaman, then why do the DC Multiverse figures always get saddled with these giant, warped, PVC pipe-looking things? Can they not make this out of this? I get that he can't use this one in particular because it's too short, but DC Essentials managed to pull it off and this trident looks great. These two are literally the exact same thickness. This one, however, is thick with two C's. Two of the seven C's, but playability is more than just nautical puns and accessories. 
series. It's also about how well your figures play with others. We've seen the original Aquaman with the new one, but here's the original with the new Black Manta. Personally, I think these two scale great. That said, for a couple of other small scale Aquaman, and here we have Total Justice by Kenner and Spin Master. For Arthur's other super friends, and here's the Superpower Superman. Here's the Toy Biz DC Comic Superhero version, and the Superpowers version by McFarlane Toys. Moving from the Man of Tomorrow to the Cape Crusader, and here we have Superpowers Batman, Toy Biz's Movie Batman, the McFarlane Toys Hush Batman, and the McFarlane Toys Detective Batman. Rounding out the Trinity, and here we have the very tiny Superpowers Wonder Woman, the Toy Biz Wonder Woman, and the McFarlane Wonder Woman. Next up, and here's the Superpowers Flash, one of a couple of different versions of the Flash by Toy Biz, and the original release of McFarlane with a darker color scheme version coming later this year. As for Green Lantern, and here we have the original Superpowers version of Hal Jordan, and the new Superpowers version of Jon Stewart. Here's the original Superpowers Martian Manhunter, hopefully McFarlane will give us one, for a couple of supporting characters, and here's the McFarlane version of Nightwing, and their first go-round of Tim Drake Robin with a better painted one coming later this year. For a few villains for Black Manta to play with, and here's the Superpowers Penguin, the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker, Batman as the Joker, the Toy Biz version of Lex Luthor, the McFarlane Deathstroke, which goes great with his Black Manta, and Darkseid. For a relative scale comparison, here's Aquaman and Black Manta with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. As a replacement for your original Superpowers Aquaman, I don't really think I can actually recommend this guy, although you could use it for a replacement Trident. That said, not only is he right at home in the new McFarlane line, but we now have a complete Justice League. When it comes to a basic, unembellished, comic-style version of the Justice League, we can't even say that for DC Multiverse. And that's been going on for three years. As for Black Manta, he seems right at home with the originals. For playability, I'm giving Aquaman and Black Manta one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. The figures are $10 a pop, and I don't know, based on some of my complaints, I kinda wish I could get a nickel back. But um, tss. If all you want are small-scale DC figures, based on the articulation, accessories, and cost, I think that Spin Master is a better option. But the Superpower figures do cater to a particular collector like me who wants to see the original line continue. They're less articulated and have fewer accessories by design, and they're a little bit more expensive because they are a limited run. In fact, with the exception of Black Manta, who's a Walmart exclusive, the rest of the figures for this wave don't even seem to be available in physical stores. Instead, they're only available through online distributors like Amazon, Amazon, Big Bad Toy Store, and McFarlaneToyStore.com. At this point, though, I feel like you probably already know whether or not this line, or these figures in particular, are for you. For price, I'm giving Aquaman one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. On the other, Finn, Black Manta gets one whole point for a perfect score of 5 out of 5. If you collect superpowers in Aquaman, which Aquaman-related characters do you hope they make next? Sound off in the comments below, and while you're down there, let me know how excited you are, or aren't, for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice, and have fun.